Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge of the Yukon. Original air date is July 7th, 1950, and the title is Race of the Riverboats. Hope you enjoy. The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Liz Terrett was an influence in Dawson City. She had inherited several enterprises from her husband, who had died the year before. Liz had taken over and was prospering. Now that summer had come, Liz had big shipments to make to Seattle, both of gold and of furs. Captain Davis of the Yukon Bell had docked at Dawson City after returning from the trip to Selkirk. He went to the Terrett Fur Trading Office to make the usual deal to carry Liz Terrett's shipments to Seattle. Howdy, Captain. I figured you'd be coming around sometime this afternoon. Have a chair. (laughs) Thanks, Liz. Uh, I suppose you've come about carrying our shipments this season. That's right. You saw the new river boat, the River Queen, that put up here yesterday, didn't you? <laughs> yep, sure did. <laughs> it looks like I'm finally going to have some competition. Why, it seems to me you'd act a little more worried than you do, Captain. Oh, why should I? I've been giving good service to folks up this way ever since the gold rush started. Yukon Bell is a fine boat even if the River Queen is newer. I reckon there's enough business for both of us anyhow. Uh, look, Captain, I had a visit from the skipper of the River Queen this morning. He's not going on to Selkirk. He's heading back to Seattle right from here. Sailing day after tomorrow. So are we. Bill Camden, the River Queen skipper, says his boat is much faster. And what's more, Captain, he's offered to reduce the rates a bit to get our business. Now, wait a minute, Liz. We've been doing business since you and your husband started up here. You don't mean to say you'd change over and ship up on the River Queen? Oh, I might. I'm not in business for my health, you know. Well, doggone it, if you do that, others will do the same. Then it won't pay me to make the run up here. I know how you feel about it, Now, hold on, Liz. Now, hold on. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll cut my rates to match Camden's. How's that? Well, now, that's something, of course. But one thing that's very important to me is something you can't match, Captain. Huh? What's that? I told you Bill Camden says his boat is much faster than yours. He hopes to beat you to Seattle by three or four days. That time means a lot to me. And he's lying. Nothing on the river, Yukon River can beat the Yukon Bell. Nothing. <laughs> now, 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 take it easy, Captain. Well, I just don't like anybody insulting the Yukon Bell, that's all. By thunder, if I had the chance, I'd show that Boston skipper of the River Queen that he'd take the smoke of my boat any time. <laughs> Say, that gives me an idea, Captain. Uh, if you really mean what you just said. Of course I mean it. I like dealing with you, and Bill Camden struck me as having a sneaky look about him that goes against the grain. Oh, then you're going to ship on the Yukon Bell after all? On one condition. What's that? If the River Queen skipper agrees, I suggest you race the Yukon Bell against the River Queen tomorrow. Uh, Say at noon. What? Sure, think of the fun and excitement. And if you're so sure the Yukon Bell can beat the other boat, you can make yourself a few big wagers on the side. But what's the reason you want The to... first boat to reach the landing at Beavertown, ten miles from here, will get my business. And that means the shipping business of most others in town. Well, how about it? Do you think the Yukon Bell can win? Of course you can. By thunder, you tell Bill Camden I'll be ready and waiting with steam up at noon tomorrow if he's willing. If he backs down, Captain, I'll consider giving my business to your boat. 
Camden is coming back here later. I told him I wanted to talk to you before I made a decision. I'll put the proposition before him, and if he agrees, I'll come to the dock and tell you. Later that afternoon, in Skipper Bill Camden's cabin on board the River Queen, Bill was talking to his first mate, Larry Smith. Larry, uh, I just gave him Liz Turret's office. Did you get the agreement for carrying his stuff? No, I thought cutting the rates would do the trick. But Captain Davis said he'd match our rates. Of course, the fact that I said we could make a faster run to Seattle almost went her over. Skipper, if we don't get some of the shipping from up this way, we won't last on the Yukon run. I'm not after just some of it. I want to get all of it. If Liz Turret's shipped on our boat, the others will follow suit. You mean we've lost out to the Yukon Bell? Not yet. Liz likes Davis. She's giving him a chance. But the decision won't be made till tomorrow. What's she waiting for? She wants me to race the River Queen against the Yukon Bell. Starting here at noon tomorrow and finishing at Beavertown, ten miles from here. She says her business will go to the winner. Uh, of course, you told her our boat was faster, but you really think we can beat Davis in a race? He's been a riverboat skipper for years, and he knows all the tricks. Larry, we're going to win that race one way or another. What's more, we stand to make some cash on bets. But how can you be sure of winning, Skipper? Look, as you know, in the boiler room below decks, each boiler has a steam escape valve on top. Mm -hmm. Keep the pressure from getting too high. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, those valves are adjustable. If someone should happen to tighten the nut on one of them so the steam couldn't escape... Boiler would finally blow up, wouldn't it? Sure, but now if that happened you... on the Yukon Bell, we'd win the race. Yeah, but some of the men below decks would be scalded. In fact, it might blow the side right out of the boat. Could be, but we got to win that race, Larry. How would you get anyone to tighten that valve down? Nobody could get into the boiler room to do it. I know somebody who could, and would. Who? Captain Davis fired one of his boiler room crew right after the boat docked. He gave the fellow until tonight to get his gear out of his locker. He's a tough guy named Butch Miller. He's plenty sore at the captain. He was swearing he'd like to get even with him sometime. I heard him raving about in the cafe earlier today. Of course, he just said that to me private-like when he asked me to take him on. Did he say he'd do what you wanted him to do? No, I didn't know about the race then. I'll go up town and find Butch tonight. I'll put it up to him to fix that valve when he goes aboard to get the stuff from his locker. I'll make it worth his while. As soon as you know for sure, I'll start making some bets. <laughs> That's a good plan, Skipper. We ought to win a lot of cash, and what's more, end up with a lot of business. It was still early evening when Sergeant Preston stopped in front of Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Come along, King. Sergeant, where you been keeping yourself? Liz Turret, hello. Well, I've been on a patrol of 40 miles. King and I just arrived in Dawson. You got back just in time for all the excitement. What excitement? The big riverboat race at noon tomorrow. The Yukon Bell is going to race the new boat, River Queen. I noticed the new boat tied up alongside the bell. What's the occasion for the race? Well, I, I reckon you can sort of blame me for that, Sergeant. You see, I'm giving my business to the one that wins. I see. I'll be fighting for fairly high stakes, then. If your business goes to the new boat, the other shippers will follow. I reckon that's true, but that's not the only stake. I hear everybody at the cafe is wagering practically all they have on the race. Of course, I'm hoping Captain Davis's boat wins, but I'm too smart to bet. Does the Yukon Bell seem to be the favorite? From what I heard, the skipper and crew of the River Queen bet plenty that they'll win. Huh? In fact, I hear Skipper Bill Camden mortgage the River Queen to the hilt to raise more betting cash. Well, he seems to be sure his boat will win. Yep, that's right. Might, too. Should be an exciting race. Where's the finish line? At the landing at Beavertown. I'll have to be on hand to see it. I'm riding the Yukon Bell. Say, why don't you come along, Sergeant? I might at that. I'll tell the captain to expect you. You can even bring King with you, huh, fella? Are both boats going to carry passengers? Well, they agreed only to take on ten apiece. <laughs> Skipper Bill is charging high prices for his ten, but the captain is carrying ten of us for free. I'll expect to see you come aboard the Yukon Bell to help us cheer if it wins. See you in the morning, Sergeant. Right. Meantime, Skipper Bill and his mate Larry Smith sat in the cafe at a secluded table, 
talking to Butch Miller, the hand who had been discharged from the Yukon Bell. Now, Butch, you got everything straight about what you're to do when you go board Davis's boat for your gear tonight. Yeah, yeah, I know just what to do. Are you sure no one will question you being in the boiler room? No one's aboard right now but the night watch. He knows I'm to go there to get my stuff. The others are all uptown here. Well, I don't want any hitching this. I bet my last dollar on the River Queen winning. Well, you just keep your end of the bargain, Skipper, and you can count on winning that race tomorrow. I've already paid you a hundred dollars. You go through with it, and we win. You'll get another hundred and a job on my boat. And be sure you don't go shooting off your mouth to somebody, Butch. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I've already bet the hundred the skipper give me on the River Queen to win. <laughs> well, I guess that proves you're sure you can go through with the plan. Yeah, it? I'm satisfied you will. Now, let's get out of here now, Captain. Butch will be going aboard the Yukon Bell soon. I'll wait a while. Then when it's done, I'll come up to your cabin, Skipper, and tell you. Good. We'll be waiting. So long, Butch. Let's get going, Larry. Later that night, Sergeant Preston decided to stroll along the waterfront and look over the two boats. Taking King with him, he left his quarters and walked toward the shadowy, deserted docks. Well, King, there are the river boats that will compete in the race tomorrow. The River Queen's a newer boat, but the Yukon Bell's well built. She's the one we'll sail on, fella. Think you'll like that? As the Mountie and his dog approached the dock, Sergeant Preston suddenly stopped. Wait, boy. He drew back in the shadows as he saw a furtive figure come down the gangplank of the Yukon Bell with a canvas bag slung over his shoulder. Well, must be one of the deckhands. As Sergeant Preston stood watching, the man's figure stopped on the dock, looked around suspiciously. Then, seemingly satisfied, he quickly walked to the gangplank of the River Queen and went aboard. Oh, that's strange. I'd like to know more about him, fellow. Probably hasn't done anything wrong in going from one boat to the other, but you might as well check with a night watch on the Yukon Dome. Come on, King. We'll try to find out just what's going on. Sergeant Preston strolled up the gangplank of the Yukon Bell and was met by the man doing the night watch. Who's that coming aboard? You better wait right... Oh, a Mountie. Yes, I'm Sergeant Preston. Evening, Sergeant. If you're looking for the captain, he's going ashore. Fact is, most everyone's ashore tonight. I didn't come aboard to see the captain. I came to check on a man I saw leaving this boat a moment ago. Oh, yeah, that's a hand the captain fired today. He came aboard to get his stuff from his locker. Name's Butch Miller. Oh, I see. It's all right, then. He acted a little odd when he got on the dock, so I decided to check on him. I checked him aboard, Sergeant. Believe me, he's good a riddance, too. Well, I was a heavy drinker on the job, and he was always causing trouble. Oh, well, his new skipper will be in for trouble, then. <laughs> he won't get a berth on any other riverboat. No other skipper would take him, especially out of Dawson City. Butch Miller's reputation is well known around this town by now. Oh, well, that's strange. He looked around when he reached the dock as though he didn't want to be seen, then went aboard the River Queen. Went aboard the River Queen? That's right. I can't figure that. Captain Davis notified Skipper Bill Cameron about Miller today. I see. Well, thanks for the information. Come on, King. We'll go on back to quarters. <laughs> Meantime, on board the River Queen in the Skipper's cabin, Butch Miller was reporting to Bill Camden. Well, Skipper, it's all done. Now all you have to do is wait till tomorrow. You are below deck saloon, Butch? Yes, sir. Tighten that valve down so as it won't work. It won't be noticed till the steam pressure gets so high, it'll be too late to loosen it in time to keep the boiler from blowing up. <laughs> and when that happens, the Yukon Bell will be out of the race. Yeah, eh? It could be more than that. The explosion might blow a hole that'll sink the boat, or it might start a fire that'll burn it to the water's edge. <laughs> it'll teach that ordinary Captain Davis to throw me off his rotten tub. Hey, hold on. Something like that's liable to happen. Liz might be killed. A win on the race wouldn't do us any good. Don't you worry. You'll have the only river packet that can carry passengers and freight to Seattle. What's more, you'll make plenty on your bets. You should have thought of what might happen. Huh? I don't like the idea that Liz might get killed. But she refused to sail on our boat. And if you say that the Yukon Bell is totally out of commission, <laughs> we'll get all the trade. Yeah. Now, uh, there's one thing, Skipper, that I want to bring up. Now, what's that? I want more cash right now. Eh? And the promise of more later. Now, see here, Butch. I'm giving you a job on this boat, along with Sit some down, cash. Sit down, Skipper. Sit down and take it easy. 
Look, if I was to tell what I know to the Mounties now, you'd stand to lose the race and come in for some uncomfortable questioning. You fool, you go to jail for fixing that bell. I'd go back and loosen it before I told him. <laughs> of course, if I told him after the boiler blew, I might go to jail, but you'd go with me. And maybe for murder. Why, you... Now, oh, look, take it easy. Didn't say I would tell. I'm just pointing out what could happen if I did. You stand to gain plenty, and I want to get some of it. Well, all right. Before we start the race, I'll give you more cash. And I'll give you 10% of what I win. Fine, fine. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll be first mate on the River Queen, huh? <laughs> Who knows? Take your gear below, Butch. I'll see you in the morning. All right. I'll leave my stuff and go uptown to the cafe for a while. See you in the morning, Skipper. After Butch Miller left the River Queen to go to the cafe, Skipper Bill Camden went to Larry Smith, his first mate, in his cabin. Larry, I got something important to talk over. What is it, Skipper? We got to do something about Butch Miller. Why? What's happened? He fixed a valve on the Yukon Bell tonight. Now he threatens to do some talking if I don't pay plenty. Uh, I never thought of that. He could blackmail us from now on. Yeah. And one of the things he wants is your job as first mate, Larry. What? You mean you're going to get I didn't say that. But remember, after the race is over, and Yukon Bell disabled, he can force us to do most anything. Unless... uh, Unless what? Unless something happens to Butch Miller. That's one way you can make sure he doesn't get your job. Hmm. I see what you mean. Look, Butch is at the cafe right now. If you watch till he heads back here at the boat, you'll have a chance. Maybe he won't come back alone. Oh, yes, he will. None of the other men are friendly to Butch. I suggest you get him in the dark and sock him with your gun, Buck. I'll wait and watch him up on deck. Give me a signal, then I'll have to carry him to the old fisherman's shack up beyond the docks. What good will that do? I mean, why keep him alive in the shack? When he comes we'll to... We'll tie him up. Then after the race, if we win, and Yukon Bell blows up, we'll finish him off. But if nothing happens, we win anyhow. Can't bother us. But if we lose on account of the boiler not blowing, Butch will wish he was dead several times over before we get through with him. Uh, that's a good idea. No use having a killing on our hands unless things happen the way they're supposed to. I'll go watch for Butch right now. After I let him have it, I'll give a low whistle. Then you come help. It was well after midnight when Butch Miller left the cafe and made his way toward the docks. He was alone and moved with slow, unsteady steps into the shadows near the docks. I'll show him Butch Miller ain't no fool. I'll get plenty from them, too. Plenty. Hey, who's that? What do you want? This'll keep you quiet, Miller. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, did it. I better signal the skipper now. <laughs> ah, when Butch Miller wakes up, he'll be plenty surprised. <laughs> The following morning, about an hour before the starting time of the race, the whole town was in a state of excitement. People lined the banks of the river for miles, and small craft drifted offshore, waiting to follow in the wake of the two river packets. As Sergeant Preston, with King at his side, went up the gangplank of the Yukon Bell, the sailor, who had been on night watch, came along just behind him. The sailor spoke. Morning, Sergeant. I was on night watch when you came aboard last night, remember? Yes, you must have been wrong about seeing Butch Miller on board the River Queen last night. Oh? Why do you say that? Well, uh, because I just came from over there. You see, a fella came from the cafe this morning bringing Butch Miller's cap, which he left behind. He gave it to one of the deckhands. Well? I told Captain Davis about what you said, that Miller went aboard the River Queen. He told me to take the cap over and leave it for him. Is that the cap you have in your hand? Mm-hmm. Has Butch's name penciled inside it. Why didn't you leave it? Well, the men over there on the River Queen say Butch isn't aboard. What's more, they said his duffel bag isn't below decks. In other words, he's not a part of the crew and nobody's seen him. But I saw him go aboard. Yeah, yeah, so you said. 
I thought maybe he went to ask for a job and got turned down. That'd account for his stuff not being aboard. But I asked Smith, the first mate, and he said he didn't know anything about Miller and didn't see him last night. Skipper said the same thing. That's odd. You give me Miller's cap, I'll go ashore and see if I can locate him. Sure, Sergeant. But don't stay too long or you'll miss the race. I'll get back in time. Now, here's a cap. Thanks. Come on, King. I'll go to the cafe and try to locate Butch Miller. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sergeant Preston went to the cafe and made inquiries about Butch Miller, learning that he had left the cafe late the night before, going out the back door. Preston left the cafe and, taking King around to the back, held out Butch's cap. Here, King. Get the scent from this, fella. Find him, King. Find him. The intelligent dog stood for a moment, and then, sniffing the ground near the back door of the cafe, he stopped and barked to indicate he had found the scent. All right, fella, go find him. The trail King was following led back toward the docks. The crowds along the waterfront confused him somewhat. Finally, because of his intensive training and keen sense of smell, the great dog made his way to the shack where Butch had been taken. Sergeant Preston pushed open the door of the shack and entered with King. Oh, someone's over there on the bunk. Man, tied and gagged. Hey, Butch Miller. Take it easy. I'll take away your gag and untie you. There. They did it. Look, I've been here all night. Wait, I'll cut your cords. There. I can set up. Yeah. Listen. They talked. They didn't think I came to yet. They plan to kill me, that's what. Who does? What's this all about? I'll fix them, though. I'll tell you, Sergeant. It's a skipper and mate of the River Queen. Oh? They paid me to tighten a valve on one of the boilers of the Yukon Bell. It'll blow up and the River Queen will win the race. So that's it. Yeah. You're coming with me. We've got to release that valve before the boats start. The boats, they're already leaving the docks. Yeah, it's too late now. Hold out your arms. What for? Hold them out. All right. These handcuffs will keep you out of trouble. I'm leaving you here with King to watch you. Stay here, King. Watch him, boy. I'll come back for you, Miller. Right now, I have to get to the Yukon Bell. Sergeant Preston ran to the dock where the Yukon Bell had been moored. Both river boats were already heading into midstream. And because of the noisy crowd, it was useless to shout. Preston looked around frantically for a few moments. And then he saw a small motorboat about to leave. He ran along the dock, calling out... Wait! Hold that boat! You're going to come aboard, Sergeant? Hurry up or we'll miss the finish. I'm coming aboard right now. Uh, now listen. It's a matter of life or death. Get me to the Yukon Bell and hurry. Do the best they can, Sergeant. Here we go! On board the Yukon Bell, Liz Terrett stood beside the captain on the bridge. Her face was flushed with excitement as the two boats moved along side by side. Hey, by thunder, Captain, this sure is exciting. Sorry Sergeant Preston didn't make it. He's really missing something. Don't know why he isn't here. Saw him heading for the boat some time ago. Then when I come to look for him, he wasn't aboard. Here's hoping you can get up speed enough to beat Camden. Well, we're not up to full speed yet, Liz. Hmm? Boys below are giving up plenty of steam, and soon I'll give the signal for full speed ahead. Some of them small craft better stay back or they'll be swarmed. Yeah, say, look, there's someone coming like blazes. Say, if he gets much closer, he'll ram into us. Better give him a warning whistle. Guess they're plumb loco. Don't pay any attention. Say, look, one of them's standing up waving. Give him a telescope. Hey. That's Sergeant Preston. I can see his red mounted jacket. He's crazy to think you'll slow down for him to come aboard now. Preston isn't a man who does crazy things, Liz. I got a feeling something's wrong. What? I'm slowing for him. No, no, don't do it, you fool. You'll lose the race. I'll take the chance. Now we're losing speed. And the River Queen is forging ahead. Maybe so. But I'm taking Preston aboard to find out what's happened. Get in line on that. A rope ladder was quickly thrown over the side, and as the big boat slowed, the motorboat carrying Preston came alongside. In a few moments, the Mountie had climbed aboard. Uh, I was afraid I wouldn't make it. I came down from the bridge to see why you waved us down, Sergeant. The captain is waiting up there for you. Tell him I have something to do, and it has to be done quickly. Oh, all right, Sergeant. As Sergeant Preston made his way down into the engine room of the boat, he heard one of the stokers shout. Hey, look at the gauge on boiler two. It's going to blow any minute. Let's get out of here. Wait. That valve has to be loosened. Ah, we're getting out. A wrench. Where's a wrench? It's hanging next to the boiler. Come out of there, Sergeant. You'll never make it. You can't do anything. 
Not heeding the stoker's warning, Preston rushed over and got the wrench. Then he went to work on the escape valve of the boiler. He could see that the pressure gauge already indicated great danger, but he knew lives might be at stake. Have to get it loose. Have to. For a chance moment he worked while the stokers huddled across the engine room near the companionway to the deck. Finally, the nut loosened and Preston fell back as a great rush of steam hissed from the escape valve. Uh, hey, the sergeant fixed the valve, but he must be good. Yeah, you got to get him up on deck. I'm all Come right. On. I threw myself to the deck and buried my face in my arms. My arm's scalded, but it isn't serious. I'll signal the captain full speed ahead. Tell him I said so. Right away, Sergeant. Oh. Sergeant Preston's message was given through the hollow signal tube. And a short time later, the Mountie went to the bridge where the captain and Liz were waiting. He told what he'd learned. I thunder it might have sunk the boat with all hands on board. Win the race now, Captain. Later, Sergeant Preston will settle with Skipper Camden and his mate. You just win the race and make him lose everything he has. Go to it, Captain. Full speed ahead. All right, Sergeant. Here we go. Full speed ahead. Slowly but surely, the Yukon Bell moved up on the River Queen. For a short time, they ran neck and neck. And then the Yukon Bell crept ahead until at the finish line, she won by a full length. The riverboats docked at Beavertown. Then Sergeant Preston went to the shack and got Butch Miller, who had been guarded during the race by the great dog Yukon King. Then, taking Butch with him, he picked up Liz and the captain, and all of them boarded the River Queen. They entered the skipper's cabin, where Skipper Camden was talking to the mate, Larry Smith. Preston opened the cabin door and entered without knocking. Well, looks like you couldn't wait to crow over me, huh, Captain? Let me tell you. Hey, what are you bringing Butch Miller here for? Why the handcuffs on him? You ought to know, Camden. And if you think I'm going to take the rap for everything, let you and Larry Smith get away oh, with it... Oh, shut up. I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. Stop the act, Camden. I'm arresting you and your mate in the name of the Crown for felonious assault on the person of Butch Miller and for trying to wreck the Yukon Queen. Now, see Do here. your talking at headquarters. Good work, Sergeant Preston. Well, Captain Davis, you won the race. I'll take these men to headquarters now. This case is closed. <laughs> We now take you to Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson. You sent for me, Inspector? Yes, Sergeant. Have you ever heard of a man called Solitaire Jackson? Yes, sir. He's an American gunman who just got out of prison. From what they say, he came up to the Yukon to get even with the man who framed him. Apparently, that's not the only reason he came up here. Man answering his description has just robbed the express office and shot the constable on guard. I want you to find him, Sergeant, and bring him in. Right, sir. Let's go, King. <laughs> Solitaire Jackson has a dangerous reputation. But why should he rob the express office if his real motive is to get revenge on the man who framed him? Perhaps there's more to this case than the inspector realizes. More mystery, more criminals involved, and more danger for Sergeant Preston. Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure, The Diamond Solitaire, Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until next Wednesday. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.